be on. We back. Can y'all hear us okay? Yeah. Are we coming through well? Mic check, one, one, two. If you can hear us. Microphone check, micro microphone check. Uh, Give one, us a two, one if you can hear us. There's three of us. If you can only hear one of us or two of us. Let us know. One, two, know. three. Give us some two. One, two, three, one, two, Mike three. Mic check, mic check. Okay, we got the ones. So before we go back, so before we get back to reading, this mm -hmm. is the reason why it is imperative that we stay and we work in our communities. Yes, sir. Because YouTube can be interrupted, but you can't interrupt the community. There's over 850,000 people in Prince William County where I live. I dare you to come to my community and try to disrupt something. I double dare you. Don't you do it. Please. You can disrupt. You can disrupt YouTube, but you won't dare bring your tail to my community and disrupt my community. I promise you that. That's the reason why this is important and this is imperative because this platform we don't own it, we don't control it, we have no influence over it. So anybody can come in and jam it up and mess it up, but they cannot come into our communities and jam it up and mess it up. That is. This is the main reason why it is imperative for us for us to get out into our communities. Because if this shuts down, all I gotta do is go outside and start talking to my Indians. I don't need YouTube. YouTube needs us. I'm gonna say it again. We don't need YouTube. YouTube needs us. Because they're not gonna dare come in our communities and start no mess. You think somebody gonna come knocking on people's doors and start ramsacking their houses and start messing up the internet feed? No. That's the reason why we need to be tribal, do our genealogy, tie into the land, and check everybody at the door. Cause no one can be because basically we're only going to be destroyed from the from the from the from the inside out. And it's it's ironic or coincidental, even though there is no there's no native word for coincidental, how all of a sudden we're starting to have problems with our with our YouTube feed. The whole time we didn't have troubles, now all of a sudden we have them. But again, it doesn't matter because we're not just on YouTube. YouTube is what we use as an outlet. We're in the community. So if you, if you really if you really bad, come to the community and stop messing something up. I dare you. Just know the laws. That's all I'm going to say. Anybody got anything else to say? Nope. So again, we not YouTubers. We business owners. We do this. We don't need we don't need YouTube for our for our community to get the word. All we need is us. So, what do we leave off? Oh yes, Brett, the triple agent. <laughs> <laughs> So they're they're trying to prohibit Brant from 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 selling the land because he is basically playing France against Britain now because Britain is at war with France and Spain. Notice how it's um it's interesting how at first France, Spain, and the United States were at war with Britain. Now it's just France and Spain at war with Britain, and the U.S. is out of it. Because, you know, they've already got their piece of the pie, the piece of the land. If I didn't know any better, I, I would think that the Europeans are playing these games if we hate each other and they're using the Indians 
as the chess pieces on the board, but that's just my personal opinion. Um, no, go ahead, go ahead. No, go ahead and spill it. Tell it, tell it. So please tell about the opium wars. What are the opium wars? So this is going on. So this is going on at the same time, correct? So where are they getting all these people from the fight? But no, so I said who? TMH? Can oh, y'all no, can y'all hear us? He yeah, I want to make sure, yeah, because he said he didn't hear anything you said. Bones. No sound. Free says she can only hear TMH. Oh, Cliff. She says she don't hear bones, me. No, no. Oh man. Bones is checking his levels now, so please bear with <laughs> us. So what, check, what Bones one, was saying was that Okay. Mic check. Mic check. Can you hear everyone now? Mic check. Michael Checker calling Michael Checker. <laughs> Do I have a Michael Checker here? Yeah, they said they can hear. Okay. And again. Basically, at the same time during the 1700s, you had the Opium Wars, which consist of France, Britain, Spain, America, uh, people over there taking chunks out of China, what you know today is China, for opium, for the major opium trade through the 1700s. And it's funny how America has a military to be sending over there. And it makes sense why they couldn't send no, no help to the colonies on the east and why they had to let the colonies go what is reported they had what over 21 naval ships over there fighting in China it's like wow 21 naval ships while at the same time fighting the revolutionary war and then also fighting a war against Indians and everything else mm -hmm. and fight in Spain and France but then that's what I don't understand how are y'all fighting on one side on the east y'all supposedly fighting against each other but then doing it in between the same times they all allies invading into China A good question. It's like, wow. So, can we say the first? Says, ah, uh, mm -mm. the more you unravel, the more and more you unravel. But we still didn't even get to the juicy parts and all that. There's still more to come. Yeah, more to come, more to come. Mm hmm. Yeah, Oak Cliff Tiff, war on drugs for real. But then you got to realize, I think Tim May said this the other day, all this war going on and fighting, pain, opium. Because you got to think, this is mass fighting and, and maneuvering of people, not just on our landmass, but worldwide, as we can start to see. 
and it's just my opinion it's, and it's just my opinion it's like we have always been the foot soldiers uh, I mean I could be wrong like I said it's just my opinion that's like we are always the ground soldiers and the majority of everybody else fighting whether we fighting against each other or they fighting against each other somehow we always in the middle doing the groundwork minding somebody else's business and not our own because how many times so far this dude went out his way to make peace and stuff he went out of his way to make deals we know he already sympathized with him and that's to each their own but I bring that up to the point to where it goes back to what we said we got to stop pointing fingers we got to do our genealogy to find out who we are because best believe his ancestors in 2019 that's in power know who they are for those who are uh, probably missed it it was yesterday we went through it and the corn planter chief corn planter is related directly to the bushes Because his father was um was European, his mother was a, a princess with the um with the Mohawk tribe, and the princes were the ones. The princes were the ones that chose the war chief. So. Just something to think about. Might check one, two, not today. Can y'all hear today. us okay? Are yeah. we coming through? Yeah, we should be coming through crystal clear. Got him. Can y'all hear us? Throw up some ones if y'all can hear us. Got him. <laughs> Got him. Mike what are you talking about? No, Bones have figured it out. Found that loop in the hole. Again, this is why it is crucial. How are you going to answer, too? <laughs> Antonio said start from the beginning he said too I missed all that what oh, okay well maybe he heard something uh, I wasn't the one that was speaking that was Bones what part he missed he said he missed all of it <laughs> mm -hmm. well you better go back in them shows <laughs> got a few resets you can look at them ones that reset this morning this yeah way. basically to so, so what am i so what am i 
Go ahead, Bones. I mean, basically, to uh, to sum it up, the story of Joseph Brent is the main indicating reason on why genealogy is so important. All right. Please say that again before you go on. The story of Joseph Brent should be the leading indicator on why genealogy, the study of your lineage, is so important. Because in this story, not only are we learning that he was making deals with everybody, you, you get what I'm saying? Not only do we realize that he sympathized with the colonizer, is that through him and his cousins and mother and sister, Chief Coin Planter, which turns us out to be fourth time cousin to the bushes so when we sit back and we be like sending them home we got to think about this if these people are tying back in to tribes on this land whether we like it or not they're doing it we not who's living like the Indian? If everything in all ways they still do and we do none of it, who's living like the Indian? And I know a lot of people probably don't want to hear this, but the truth hurts. We got to swallow this pill. We're not the ones living it. Because the more and more we dig, the more and more I see. It was our own people are the children of our, some of our people, you know, mulattoes, whatever, still they were our people because they're the children, half-breed children of some of our tribes. We got to own up to that. Um, started making deals, and this one dude got to the point to where he got very powerful off of making deals. And these decisions that he made invited a lot of people that you see here to this day. But that's the problem. We can't judge people by eyesight. Because until you do your genealogy, you don't know who is who. Yeah, you can look look at a person, but that means nothing. We always use the term never judge a book by its cover. So why are we so guilty of it? All right, we got to open up this book find his lineage, find his genealogy. This should be the first, second, third, and fourth fight. 2020 is around the corner. Is this going to be another one of them things? People get rallied up for it. It comes and goes and people go back into their houses doing the same thing. This is the same Indian chief that invited Quakers over here to open up schools. And put it on Indian, put the schools on Indian land to teach the children. This is the same Indian chief that followed the Angelico Christian religion to the point he translated it into the Mohawk language to teach the Mohawk to be Christians. And yes, we can sit here and we can be like, oh, they have breeds, this and that. So even by saying half breeds, we're still half responsible. Because just like in the story, how you read with the one dude, Wapanakins, his sister. His sister is laying down with an Englishman. He wakes up from a drunken night think his sister being raped get into a fight he did but the things we have to realize in these stories is people were choosing to do some of these things no not everybody no not everybody but people did have a choice 
Let's stop painting this broad brush that everybody was forced into a belief system or everybody was forced into a way of life. Because even in these stories in the 1700s, we see that there's Indians that don't want to even deal with this. We see the interfighting that's going on between tribes and different ideologies if we read these stories and take our emotions and feelings off of them and be willing to deal with the facts. Yes, we know we can't take everything we read as literal, and we don't. We take the stuff that's written down and we cross-reference it, like TMA said before. Then you, with your tribes, ask questions, learn the history. Then you can see what part of your tribal history and dates line up to some of these stories that's in here. Because this dude right here basically had interactions with basically every tribe on the east coast it looked like so far and the west coast basically if you needed somebody to be the middleman between the americans and indians you got a brand and even in this story i don't even well, think we to the halfway somebody... oh go ahead tmh and look and if you need somebody to be it need to be there between the Indians and France, the Indians and uh, Britain, and the Indians and Spain, it appears. You was the first playing all so, sides. This is crucial. And with what's going on with, with this YouTube feed, it, 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 it forces us to remember why it is important to get out to our communities because at any time YouTube can be halted, restricted, or shut down. And this information stops on the internet, but it does not have to stop in your community. If they shut if they if they if they shut our stream down right now, I can still go out and talk to my community and, and help them do their genealogy without YouTube. Let that sink in. We don't need YouTube. YouTube needs us. Because without us, there is no YouTube. We existed before YouTube. Let's get that straight. Brant didn't have YouTube. Antonio said he is snitch. <laughs> he's, he's, Antonio, he a lot of things. <laughs> Joseph Brant was a lot of things. He was, he was a sympathizer who wanted, he wanted peace. Mm -hmm. He wanted unity. This is an example of unity. Yeah, Antonio. This is an example of everybody. Kumbaya, everybody getting yeah. along. Yeah. This is a, this is an example of how how um, complete unity looks. This is this is a definition of complete unity, right and we, here. And shall we say cause and effect? Because we know what the cause is. Now we're seeing the effects in our time. You understand? Because he sympathized with the European way on how they did business and stuff. So he incorporated that and he got political power and influence. But at what price? But at what price? It's a large price. We are still paying that price. Mm hmm. And then ain't this one of the oldest stories we have heard? Him and the Iroquois, they sided after they was with the French. Then they sided with the British. They helped the British eliminate other Indians. Then in the end, the British turned on them. Ain't that normally how it go? Mm-hmm. We've even picked, we've even picked up those ways with, with within our own virtual communities. Mm -hmm. Look at look at that through some of the, um, what you call the conscious communities, where you have these alliances forming and breaking and forming and breaking and forming and breaking and ambushing and attacking, and then the original attackers now become allied, and then they they break apart and attack differently, and then they align with somebody else. It's the same. It's the same process. We just we're just copying what we saw, mm -hmm. what we see. Uh, give me 20 seconds. But see, here's the one place. 
here's a, here's the one place where where that where that cannot work. See, a YouTube person cannot come into your community on your land and do that to you. They can only do it virtually. They won't dare come into your yard. They won't dare come into your community. They won't dare come into your county. See, they can do it virtually. They won't dare come into your community. One, because they're scared. Two, because they'll be exposed. Three, because they ain't got the heart. <laughs> oh, Cliff still says we need a refund. Oh, Cliff, that that is a that is a a, a perfect analogy. That is a fact. We do need a refund. But first, we need to reform. We need to reform our way of thinking. And and I I know you get it, oh, Cliff. I know you get it. We need to reform our way of thinking. We need to reform our approach. We need to first fix ourselves. Then we need to work on our family, then our community, then our region, then our state, first in our state, then our region, and then we can reach out to everybody else. The problem is everybody's trying to reach out to a virtual community. We need to reach out to our local community because those are the actual people that we can touch. Because when YouTube shuts down, they throttle the system or they shut your page down for a month, that's a whole month where you're not reaching the community. Well, reaching the YouTube community, but that's a whole month where you can still build in your community. So again, like I said yesterday, and like I have been saying, I'm sure there are a lot of people doing work in the communities. I'm just asking that we see the work. And if you don't want to show the work, my question is, why not? I'm sure you have a good reason, but let somebody know the reason. Because if not, then now we're led to speculate. And at this particular point in time with the 2020 census right around the corner, we need to focus more on genealogy now than ever. We need to focus on getting back on code now more than ever. We need to focus on helping people find their tribes now more than ever. And at the end of the day, if you want to work with me or anyone from A2, we're going to ask you some tough questions. And if we don't get the answers, we're not working with you. Question number one is, are you are you looking for your tribe? And if the answer is yes, that's the first test you pass. The second question is, who is your tribe? Are you tied into the land? Are you trying to tie into the land? Who can vouch for you? What work are you doing in your community? Can anybody in your community vouch for you? And the reason why these questions are crucial is because we can't trust anybody's words anymore. No one gets a pass based off of what you say. I'm going to say it again. We cannot trust anybody's words anymore. You cannot get a pass off of what you say. Your actions have to speak for you. And somebody has to vouch for you. And if can't nobody vouch for you and your actions aren't speaking, then we can't, I can't, I cannot afford to be dealing with you. And I would hope everybody would feel the same way, even with me or anybody else. Because this is not a game. We, can, we see what happens when we have Indians that are forming alliances with these European colonizers and basically turning land over to them. Antonio says, but what are the thoughts of the American government side of the table? Didn't this guy go to New York to meet with Washington? What was that about? Antonio, he went to Washington because he was trying to play the United States against Great Britain. He basically, from what I gather, and you can go back and read it because I can put the, put the link in the chat. He was basically trying to do to America what the Europeans had been doing to the Indians, playing two sides against the middle. Because you got to remember, this is after the Revolutionary War. Britain had already got their butt kicked 
So they ended up having to leave those territories in the United States. So they moved to Canada and then they moved west. So you got to remember, you got the 13 colonies now. They are they are the um, the forming of the United States of America. So they had already got their butt kicked. They did, they were not looking for another war with the United States. So when the United States started encroaching on some of the land north of New York, getting close to Canada, in those outskirts, you know, some of the Mohawk and the um, other tribes that were up more on the side of British was like, oh, we need to stop this. So Joseph Brandt wanted to negotiate with the Americans and say, hey, you know, we'll um we'll form a treaty with you as long as you keep your people off our land. And then on the other hand, he was saying to the British, look, they coming up here trying to take our land. Now we need to we need to do something about this or we're gonna end up going back to war. So he was trying to play two ends against the middle. Yeah, basically trying to do what was Golden done to the in. Indians. He was trying to do back to uh, Britain what was done to the Indians. Get Britain and America to fight against each other. Right, go to move. Uh, the, the most dangerous threat to U.S. is allowing the tribes to come together. And that's that's the reason why it's imperative to find your tribe. It's imperative to help your tribe. Because before tribes can come together, they have to be in a position to where they're self-sufficient. See, it's not about, it's not just about getting numbers. It's about being sufficient. C case in point, what happened today, right? We were doing the stream, right? And then all of a sudden they cut the stream. Now, if the stream, if the YouTube stream were the only means of us reaching out to our community, we would be dead in the water, pun intended. But because because majority of us are out here reaching out to our community members, people in our community, they could shut this YouTube stream down, but they won't stop what we're doing because we don't need YouTube to reach our community. That's no different than teaching our Indian tribal brothers and sisters to stop just trying to um, live off of the the funds that the state give them. Start having businesses to where you don't need the state to give you money in order for your tribe to survive. YouTube is nothing more than a larger example of the United States government. Not that I'm mocking it, I'm just saying that's what it is. Because if, the, because if YouTube shuts down, YouTube is one of your primary sources of income, then you're shut down. If YouTube shuts your page down for a month, then what happens to your income? But if your in income is not solely dependent upon YouTube, then they only affect a small portion, if any, of your income. So going back to what we're talking about as far as helping our tribes, we help our tribes become more dependent or independent than no matter what the government does as far as funding and cuts and things of that nature, the tribes will not be adversely affected. No. Because one of the things that was brought up yesterday was about resources, 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 resources. Well, if, you, if the land is in your tribe's name, then you have the resources. Yep. But if you don't know what to do with that land, then it doesn't matter how many resources you have. It's like having a car and can't drive. Mm -hmm. It doesn't do you any good. So at the end of the day, our goal is to put everyone's people and their tribe in a position to where they're not dependent on a handout. They're not dependent on one stream or one source of income coming from one source. And again, like I said, if the only way that many of us who are on YouTube are generating a large portion of our income from YouTube and somebody causes your your, your stream to get shut down, you stuck. Mm -hmm. If your truck, if your stream gets shut down for two weeks, that's two weeks of income that you're not getting. Whereas if you are 
operating a business that would not depend on YouTube, you only lose a small portion of that business. That's the reason, that's another reason why I say it's important to be in your community. It's important to be working out a platform. There is no tribal member, no Indian that owns YouTube. YouTube is a boss. And if you're receiving an income from YouTube, you are an employee, i.e. a contractor. There is no 50-50 partnership. Read the agreement. You're receiving less than 10% of the proceeds. That's not a partnership. You're literally an employee, a.k.a. a slave. Because at any moment that they decide to throttle or allow someone to affect your channel, what are you going to do? See, we have to be in a situation to where we're not dependent on one source of income or the government to support us. And when I say the government, I'm talking about I'm talking about being tribal, um, receiving stipends and, and the like. Mm -hmm. From that standpoint. Mm -hmm. And that's all we're so saying, basically. That's the reason why this. Yeah, go ahead, Bones. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. And that's basically all we're saying. Some might get mad or don't like that we don't bring it in a fairy tale message, because it's really not that sweet. Is showing our people. The benefit of being self-sufficient is that just how TMA said and not to bring it back up too much is that if you're on YouTube and that's all you depended on then how much independency do you really have if you're on YouTube following into the same narrative how different are you really when we should be working towards building our own and that's always been stated so therefore when we come across this information that's very vital it doesn't matter who doesn't like it we have to be cautious on what we represent and what we allow to represent us because a lot of times we do a lot more damage than good. Just like, like I said, we must use this story and learn the lessons from it. In Joseph Brent eyes to him, he was doing a good service to him. But even in our actions and our intentions, we got to take a step back and look at the bigger picture. Understand what I do today can affect me and someone else tomorrow and how it can affect someone of tomorrow just how Joseph Brent actions affected people who never personally even knew him probably didn't even know who he looked like but actions and decisions affected people's livelihoods and families forever see we get prideful when we go through our history sometimes and the things that we learn and we so quickly gloss over the lessons that we need to learn. The mistakes of our ancestors so we don't repeat the same mistakes. Is that if we're going to be doing negotiations, our job is to make sure the sole benefactor is us and our people. But the only way you're going to be able to have them type, uh, type of negotiations, you have to start minding your business. You have to start learning what it means to be tribal. What it means to stay on code. Because if you study our history long enough, every time we stuck to the code, that's when we rose to the top. And every time we got off the code, we ended up on the bottom. The majority of this story of our lifetimes and parent lifetimes were of 
Negroes, so-called blacks, Afro-Americans, all living under a code that wasn't for us. And now we stand at the point to where we can make a change. So are we going to do the same things that came before and expect a different outcome? Or are we going to change how we go about this? Making sure that first things are first before we want the end game. Are we going to be steadfast in this to realize on this journey we will go through some ups and downs. We will have some hard times. That there's going to be times in when our belief system is tested and we must stand our ground. But if we can't get it together in the starting blocks, what do you expect to accomplish in the race? When it comes to the world of IT, especially IT security, they have a um, protocol that basically states you deny everything until it's proven worthy of interest. I'm going to say that again. You deny everything until it's proven worthy of interest. How is something proven worthy? Hard questions have to be answered. Who are you? Are you looking for your tribe? What is your agenda once you find your tribe? Are you looking to tie into the land? Are you looking to be a sovereign citizen? Are you looking to start your own tribe? Who vouches for you? What are you doing in your community? Can anyone in your community vouch for you? What is your agenda? Who are you trying to unite with? What is their agenda? Because we can be guilty by association. And at the end of the day, if you're trying to unite with everyone that looks like you, I can't trust you. Because you're telling me you're not asking the hard questions and you're not denying injury until they're proven. But here's the interesting thing. I will ask anybody who who decides to take that can't we all get along unity approach. Do you leave your front door unlocked or wide open? Do you leave your car doors wide open? If not, why not? Because if you don't have those same practices in your community, why do you have those same why do you have those practices on the internet? If you don't just let anybody walk into your house and walk into your refrigerator or walk into one of your rooms without checking them, why would you allow somebody to just come all into your chats? Come on to your come onto your page and come into your community without checking them. That doesn't make any sense. Not to me. If that makes sense to you, that's fine. But that means that you and I, we can't do business. Because everybody gets checked at the door. Mm-hmm. Everybody. I don't care what your title is. I don't care what your status is. I don't care who you are. You getting checked. Because at the end of the day, we will always destroy from the inside out. And once I let you in, it's hard to get rid of you. Like they say, it's easier to stop a thief out at the door. Once that thief is in your house, it's hard to keep, it's hard to watch that thief. Their relationships Especially are built. Especially when you don't think or know that person is a thief. Facts. And I even put it in... So, Mic check, mic check. Yeah, go ahead. Oh, no, I was uh, saying I'll put it in hood terms if they didn't get it how you uh, laid it out for them. We have a code 
back in our neighborhoods. And a lot of us know, you at the park, you playing ball. Can an outsider come to that court and just walk up and play? Not in my neighborhood, they can't. Is the home team just going to play with this outside dude? Or this outside dude going to have to wait around and eventually somebody give him a chance and then he's going to have to show what he can do on the court before you just let him come near and run games and start his own five, right? Exactly. So why, as we get older, we forget the code? We want it to be so part. See, we fall guilty of the same thing that Joseph Brandt does. Conforming so much to this European lifestyle that we forgot the code. That you notice as we got older, the more and more we got away from grandma. And the more and more we picked up, more this Europeanized lifestyle. How many of us grew up caring about name brands and designers? Let's, th- let's be honest. But as we got older and got more and more into this system, we wanted to be more and more like the Europeans that the majority of us are screaming that we hate so much. That's why I say sometimes we have to take a step back because what we say can and will be used against us, all of us. My actions could affect my brothers that's on this panel with me and their children's children's children down the line. People ask questions, why don't the tribe step forward? But I'm going to say it how I always say it. If we're not on code, why should they? When we're so happy to broadcast to the world, us not raising our children on Facebook and these social platforms, us as adults recording children in petty fights on these social platforms, us allowing the worst of the worst of our community to speak for us, to be on display. That we run to these digital devices to see these so-called reality shows that's telling the world that we ain't nothing but a crazy dysfunctional people. But then on the other hand, we oh, want somebody to come lay it out for us. Go ahead, TMH. Let's not forget giving passes to people that have scammed our community Hmm. and partnering with them to increase our views. This all have to stop. So you trying to tell me because we supposed to have a cool relationship I'm supposed to sit by and watch you take something from my neighbors. Huh? What does that make sense? See, we can't complain about the problems in our community if we don't have the guts to stand up face to face to fight the problems of our, of our communities. Because the first problems of our communities is us. The things that we allow. For a minute, let's forget about everybody else. Let's forget about the European. Let's forget about everybody else. We have to deal with our own issue first. Because if our how if our homes are broken, our communities are broken, our relationships with our tribal members are broken. Who are we fighting again? Just like the Western tribes. The U.S. government realized them people wasn't conquered because why? They didn't just lay there and accept it. If something was wrong, they stood up against it, even if it cost them their lives. I'm finna say it again. If something was wrong, they stood up, even if it cost them their lives. And I'm not saying let's go out here and fight. That's the dumbest thing you can do. How you gonna fight something if you don't even know how it operates? Throwing punches in the air.
the same people that tell you don't talk to the tribes all it's hard and telling you be revolutionary and fight because we need resources so where's the resources to fight where's your clean water where's your arsenal manufactories at your medicine for your wounded and sick your basic infrastructure for food shelter and clothing come on let's break it down to the basic fundamentals so I say again we must be cautious yes the intent might be pure but the method can ruin it let's stop being the main contributors to our destruction so let's stop being the faces of our killers and let's get out of this emotional thing to where we can't face our own truths as a family we're so quick to get on social platforms or so quick to get out in the public to try to handle our personal affairs why we can't come together as a family and fix it and I understand a lot of people don't use that word but I'm using it in context because there's a lot of people that's coming into this knowledge for the first time and let's not be so critical and quick to rush and judge most of these people spoke this way the majority of them lies are just coming into the knowledge of an American Indian So let's be considerate as we move forward. Let's show compassion when it's time for compassion. Understanding when it's time for understanding. And when it's time for us to be stern and be soldiers, then we're soldiers. But make no mistake about it. Battle is the last thing. That's when you have exhausted every other means. When you have tried everything else that the Creator have left for you has failed then that's your last resort if we're coming out the gate screaming and hollering and didn't even try how do you think it's going to end hmm. and bones the thing that you're the main thing that you're talking about being a war is the last resort that's in a lot of these tribes constitutions mm-hmm those things are in the constitutions. That's the reason why there's councils. That's the reason why the constitutions are so thoroughly laid out to where when done correctly, courts cannot overturn them because you already have your own system of judgment where everybody is in agreement, i.e. a contract, which is what we created. So at the end of the day, if you see something that don't look right, say something. Because it's easier to stop an offense in the early stages than it is to wait for it to get too big and more people have been caught up in it. Because we understand, and I understand this, sometimes you can have a great intention and like Bone said, the method could be wrong. And if no one ever pulls you to the side and be like, you might not want to do that because this is what it could entail or it could hurt somebody this way or you could end up getting into trouble. But because we don't want to offend somebody and we become too politically correct, which is a, Euro, which is a European thing. Political correctness, not calling something out and not calling like it's it, that's not something that we've done. So how is it that that's what we, all we, what we always do on YouTube? I just want unity. I'm just for complete unity. That's a European, that's a European concept. I, our trials have always been about being on code and being righteous judges. And, and the first judge you're going to be is of yourself. You're going to be a harder judge on yourself than anybody else, which basically means there's not going to be any need for anybody to correct you because you're going to be on code. And therefore, when you're on code, it's easier to make sure everybody else is on code. 
because it's hard for me to co- to correct you if I'm doing dirt. If I'm collecting money and taking money from my community, but I'm accusing you of doing the same thing, I'm no better than you. I'm in no I'm in no situation where I could where I could even point it out. But if I'm not doing that and everything I'm doing is to help the community and I pull you to the side and be like, yo, you you might not want to do that because that's going to give the wrong look. And if you still continue to do it, now that's a problem. And I'm going to call it out. And if you don't like it, you know where I'm at. And that's just real. If you, if you don't want to be around somebody that doesn't have a problem with calling it like they see it, I'm the wrong person to be around. If you want to just feel good about being an in, in, in Indian, I'm the wrong person to be around because we have to get our standards back to where they were. Who are you? Are you trying to be tribal? Are you doing your genealogy? Are you encouraging others to do theirs? Are you helping people do their genealogy? Do you know who your tribe is? Are you tied into the land? Who are you uniting with? What do you know about the people that you're uniting with? Can anybody vouch for them? Who's willing to vouch for them? Are they financially willing to vouch for them? Are they personally willing to vouch for them, AKA sponsor them? Because that's what sponsor means. I am responsible for this person because you don't know them and because I know them, if they do anything, then what they do is on me. That's what that means. And if you have a problem with with my approach to that, then you do not have to be bothered with me in any way, shape or form. But just know I would choose not to have any, I would choose not to be dealing with you because we cannot afford to play any more games and allow people to hurt people and, and, not, and not say anything about it. So just know, trust and believe that if we're going to have a conversation, those are the questions that you're going to get asked. Those, in, those are questions I encourage people to ask me. Those are questions I encourage people to ask everybody. And here's, and here's a statement to think about. If you have a problem with being questioned, why? I relinquish the mic. Like I said, a lot of us came a long way, but we still got a whole lot of work to do. One day at a time, one step at a time, and we're going to get it done. But we have to be honest with ourselves moving forward. We got to be willing to take accountability of our actions. We got to be willing to put an end to the foolishness for so long that we are allowed to grow out of our neighborhoods and our communities. Yes, other people have had a hand in this, but who gave them permission to put the hand in? Who opened the door? We must get on code. That's why we constantly say genealogy, genealogy, genealogy. Know who you are, because best believe they know who they are. You don't think the bushes, what we read yesterday, them being real related to corn planter, chief corn planter. You think they don't know that? Take that little tidbit of information that we dug up yesterday. Now apply that to the bush season laying out there in Texas. Applying that to them and their oil lines and stuff. Come on, let's think for a second. That half of these people family is still tied into a tribe. And they're tied into their tribe, tying them back into the land. The majority of our people have no idea, no desire to want to tie back into a tribe or find out who they are. Think about it. Let's think about it. A lot of the things that happen to us 
and that have happened to us could it be because they know who they are and the ones in high power tie back into this land tie back into tribes and we have no idea we're still the silent party we're still waiting on the savior Being tribal is about accountability, personal accountability, and holding your brother and sister accountable. And if you got a problem with accountability, then I got a problem with you. That's just facts. That's why we say, make no mistake about it. This is not for the weak hearted. This is not for the skittish. This takes way more than getting on the screen or doing live streams or beating on your chest. We have to get to the point to where we're willing to stand face to face with our neighbors. I mean, some people don't even speak to their blood family members. Come on, we're going to go there. We got to be willing to step out of the shadows. Stop whispering that the American Indian is here. Oh, don't tell me it's happening again. Yeah, man, you know the deal. I might well just hush for the rest of the uh <laughs> Mic check, mic check, still bad. Still break that. It's buffering. Uh oh. Hello? Oh, he went on mute. <laughs> <laughs> okay, hello, Claire. Put the put this put the boot on the throat. On the throat. <laughs> put the boot on the throat. When you got him down, keep him down. There ain't gonna be no Jason Voorhees moments. You're not getting back up. Oh, sorry. Had a moment. <laughs> I think I we turn all my back and then you stand up. Nope. <laughs> hit me the head with a hatchet. Mm -mm. Nah, we're gonna make sure you down. over again. <laughs> <laughs> 